Hello, everybody. It's the coach. This is Madden 20 on EA Sports. Straight ahead, we've got a great one on tap between the Seattle Seahawks and the New York Jets. I'll have scores around the league for you at the half, but it's time for a little football. So we'll hand it over to our broadcast team, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. We are situated about eight miles west of New York City at MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford. The scene a few moments ago, here it is. It's unlike any other in sport as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. These folks are fired up as their guys are ready to do battle between the Seattle Seahawks and the New York Jets. Hi again, everyone, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. And, Charles, you look at this Jets ball club. Now, they've lost three straight here, and it goes without saying, I guess, they could certainly use a win. And how do they get a win? Because they've lost three straight, I think it's paramount that they get a fast, clean start to this game. Meanwhile, for our visitors, the Seahawks, they come into this one off a bit of a clunker last time out, a loss that ended their five-game winning streak. Both of these teams about to reach the halfway point of this NFL season, and we're underway on EA Sports. This one fielded at the five. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. So out come the Seahawks now for their first possession. They'll be led out by the man who proclaims to be from a whole pack of Badgers, came into the league back in 2012, Russell Wilson. Coming off of a loss their last time out, I think he's just seeking to make a bigger impact on the game. He threw a touchdown pass, didn't throw an interception. I think he just wants to jump those numbers up in terms of flinging it around and letting his receivers get into the end zone. Now Wilson on first down. Leaves it for Petty. He'll have a first down past the 40, and he'll take it to the 43-yard line. 17 yards on the catch and run. It's a first down. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. Here's Rashad Penny, first carry for the former San Diego State Aztec. And it's scooped up by the Jets, and his guys are going to take over at the 39-yard line. Well, he's going to have to shake out the cobwebs first time he touches the football, and he drops it on the ground. So many times we talk about quarterbacks and taking care of them early to get them in the flow with safe throws, right? But with a runner, there is no such thing as a safe run, right? And right out of the gate, you're going to be admit, you're going to be in some traffic. Got to take care of the ball, and he didn't do that. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. And a fumble last time, ball security. Talk about it all the time in the National Football League. They've got to be better at it on this drive. Don't you think that when every team gets together for the first time, I don't care if it's OTAs, mini camps, first and first day of camp in the regular season, ball security comes up about what, the second sentence of the coach's yeah. address? And those are so many drills focus on that. All the time, and they do drills to make it even tougher to simulate game situations. Doesn't always work out, though. Hit from behind, and he's going to be driven down. Leonard Williams, he's the one to get him, and that is sack number seven for him on the year. He was trying to keep his eyes downfield. Nobody came open. He's trying to do everything that he had been taught, right? Every bit of the technique. But if no one's open, there is no technique, except make sure you hold on to the ball as you go to the ground when you're getting sacked. On fourth down, ready to punt Michael Dixon. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. And that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. So now here comes the Jet offense as they get ready to take over. Leading them out is their six foot three quarterback, the third overall selection in 2018, Sam Darnold. 
and the numbers were not pretty. I mean, they don't look right. When you throw two interceptions, no touchdown passes, there's no way to really make that work. But I thought there were a lot of positives in watching his game tape. I think he's close to putting on a good performance. Let's see if he can flip those numbers around in this game. And, of course, rally his team to a win. And they're able to get this one across the 35. It'll be a pickup of 16 and a Jet first down. They've got good playmakers on the offensive side of the ball. I don't know what happened last week to, to really hurt their performance and, and hold down their production, but... I would dare say that this week in practice, there's a lot of talk about how they're going to increase their proficiency. And that was a good start, getting the playmakers involved. You mentioned that to me pregame. That's what they did there. Yeah, I think a lot of people think the coaching staff really gets on them, and that's how they motivate them. Most of these guys are self-motivated. They have a lot of pride in their performance. Now as we look down, it appears we've got a jet shaken up on the play. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break. Mike's 50. Three buzz, three buzz. Now a carry for the former Michigan State man, Le'Veon Bell. It'll only be a gain of a yard, and it sets up a third down and four now. The offensive starters now for the Jets. And I think we'll see a renewed sense of urgency out of this team this week because they have to make sure they don't waste this home stand. They had a home game last week. Lost it. Now they've got the second straight. They've got to take advantage of it. Get a win before they head out on the road. Darnold completes it. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. The drive stays alive. A third down gain of eight. Silver, silver. From the 50, it's Darnold. He's going to find his tight end. That's Chris Herndon. And he's able to get this one down go, go, to the 40-yard line. Ten yards is the pickup. Good enough for a Jet first down. Darnold going to lead the offense up first and ten. And he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. They'll go back to the ground with Bell. And not able to break away this time as they're going to stop him right around the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. Now it's Darnold. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. Now play number seven of the drive as they're looking at a third and ten. Now Darnold. And that is incomplete. That pass just a little bit off. It looked like maybe he tried to force it in there. Game speed, always different, no matter what you do in practice. Can't simulate it, right? So your decision-making, everything has to be a little bit quicker. Sometimes it can throw you off until you adjust. Was a kicker from that distance, 56, 57 yards. So many things you got to worry about, but I am a little surprised he didn't get it there. Yeah, with the way kickers are nowadays, we're surprised anything under 65 that it doesn't get at least to the crossbar. But remember this, you have to drive it a little bit lower in order yeah. to make that distance, and you also have to be worried about the interior rush that they can get their hands on it. So that's why those stronger kickers nowadays who can pop it up in the air and still travel and carry it, that's who you're looking for. A look at the numbers from Penny last week. 20 carries, 68 yards. And I'm eager to see how they deploy him in this game. Last week, a heavy workload. Do they decide to bring that down a little bit and try and keep him fresh? Or do they say, guess what? He's locked in. Keep handing him the football. Now they nab the rookie there for the five-yard penalty. So much going through his head. You know it just has to be, right? All of his assignments and realizing every game he plays, one of the better players in the league will be opposite him. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. Here are the starters defensively for the Jets. And right now in the National Football League, they're ranked number 18 against the pass. What they lack in pass defense, they do make up for in run defense. They're a top 10 unit against the people trying to move the ball on the ground. 
But this is a passing league. So there's a conundrum for them. How do they get better defending the pass? After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. He's got Lockett. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A nice pickup of 23 on the third down conversion. So in jet territory now. Here's first and 10 as they're down to the 29-yard line. Out of the gun, here's Wilson. And it's incomplete. Jennings was the one he was looking for, but it's going to be second down. Here's second and 10 now from the 29. Wilson now to throw again. It's caught, lock it. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. They'll try and run for it with Penny. And he will maneuver his way down to about the seven. Only a yard on the pickup there. Second and goal. The line of scrimmage, the seven now on second and goal. Here's the first carry for Bo Scarborough. And nowhere to run on the interior of that defensive line. He'll get back only to the line of scrimmage. He wasn't ready. He wasn't ready. On third and goal, Wilson. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had a defender right there with him to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. Once you get into the red zone and the safeties have less ground to cover, you'd better be quick with your delivery. Not much space to get a ball in there. And when that field shrinks with those safeties, it's almost like there's a couple extra defenders out there, right? It certainly is. They end up taking up extra space just because there's not enough space for receivers to run through. So three drives now for this offense, and that field goal gives them their first three points. So if you're an offensive coordinator and you're averaging a point a drive, Here we go. you're in the wrong lot of work, aren't you? <laughs> Here we go. You got to find a way to yeah. unlock the key to these defenses and put some big points on the board. Now the Jets offense gets ready to head back on the field. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. Plays like we just saw there, that's why they're up right now. And the defense, they're doing their job. Yeah, it starts with the guys up front. So when you talk with GMs who are putting together a team, a lot of them say, we're going to build from the inside out because if you control the line of scrimmage, you control the rest of the ball game. And that's what we're seeing here. They're actually playing in the offense's backfield, not necessarily just playing at the line of scrimmage. Getting it to them in space pays off big time. That winds up going for 31. That's just flat out a beautiful throw right there. It was a rope. That's maybe the speed you would see on a slant, but he threw that downfield with that kind of pace. Now, if he throws that one with any type of arc, puts a little air under it, that play doesn't happen. He had to fire it in there, and he did exactly that. Now, Bell. And he's going to get this down near the 30-yard line. 14 yards is the pickup there and a jet first down. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Throwing on second down. Darnold into the hands of his receiver, Anderson. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks' 18. Darnold from the red zone now. And that'll be incomplete. He was looking for a new one there, and that'll bring up second down. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. To throw is Darnold. Got his man there. It's Wallace complete. And they work this near the five. He'll be stopped at the six. 
The Jet passing game in rhythm. They've got another first. Now Bell. And they'll be driven back here, losing yardage to the nine. Oh, yeah. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. A right, quick observation, Brandon, because early on in this game, I'm seeing linebackers playing with their noses close to the line of scrimmage. And my guess is the wheels are turning on that other sideline. As a play caller, you're filing that away right now, aren't you? Yeah, you're trying to find that opportunity later on when you can play action them or stick something to them between the second and the third level. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. This has been a long drive. You got to figure a field goal would be a letdown. Can they convert now on third and goal? Throw complete to Herndon. Pushing a foul, roughing the passer, defense. So instead of forcing the field goal, it'll be first and goal. Yeah, the force was trying to make something happen that just didn't need to, right? I mean, the plays happen, let it go. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Jets. A great effort there. His fourth touchdown on the year. And the Jets have taken the lead. I know the play ends up in the end zone with one person carrying the ball, but how about that big mass of humanity that guided him to that spot? Yeah, they got there, but I love the dive. Always a fan of the dive. On here, Brandon McManus for the point after. So he missed his lone field goal try, but he's got this one as that extends their lead. So that one, a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it's finished off with a five-yard touchdown run. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This fielded at the two. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point. The kicker. Exactly. You put it through the post. That's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> bad. I don't know about that. Bad, <laughs> Super tough. Throwing is Wilson. That's complete to Disley, the tight end. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Right about 20 yards on the pickup. Well, officially, they'll say it's going to go for 19. After one, 7-3 the score on EA Sports. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. From the gun, it's Wilson. And his throw here's incomplete. Jennings was the one he was looking for. And now it's second down. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Wilson leaves this one with Penny. One yard, the official pickup there. So it's going to set up third and nine. The Seahawks on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and nine. Here's Wilson. Pass incomplete, but the flag in the backfield, and this might be a roughing call. Roughing the passer, defense. Well, they'll get the yardage, but they hate to see him take that hit. You're always trying to cool off a big-time guy throwing the ball. But you have to know when to back off, pull up, and not hit him. There's the penalty. After the penalty, it's Penny. Works his way inside the 30 on a pickup of four. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. He'll find Metcalf. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. He lost two there, and it's third down. 
They completed the screen on the perimeter, but boy, that was textbook defense, exactly as you're taught to play against a wide receiver screen, and they snuffed it out for a loss of yardage. The Seahawks on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and eight. From the shotgun, Wilson. That's incomplete, but there is a flag down. So hang on, a big call coming on third down. So instead of giving them another third down, they'll decline it, brings up four. Now that's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back. Good job declining that penalty. No problems in the field goal department so far. He's two for two. Pretty reliable here in this game, isn't he? And to me, that bodes well for them. If they need him late in the game, his confidence should be sky high. This is taken at his four. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. So here are the Jets now to take over. They are trying to snap that three-game losing streak on top so far with the football here first and ten. Now a play fake here on first down. That one complete to Anderson. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. A good pick up there, 26 yards. So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Here's Bell, and an alley to run, and he gets this inside the 35-yard line. It'll go as a gain of 11 and a Jets first down. At this stage of the game, the run-pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of the yardage has come through the air, but in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. Now off the bootleg, Darnold. And that'll be incomplete. We do have a penalty flag down, however. Let's see what that's about. The hit comes late. We saw it. There's your flag. And we know that there's a guideline, right? Ball's gone. You get one step. If you're within one step of the quarterback, you can hit him as long as it's still done legally. But anything outside of that... Looks like an extra step was involved. So he got free of one tackle, but couldn't do a whole lot else. Give him three on the play, and that'll make this a second down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Got a man, it's caught. Touchdown, Jets. Quincy Anunwa, his second touchdown on the season. And the Jets will extend their lead. Well, that's about as quick of a passing touchdown as you'll ever see right there. Everyone has a section in their playbook called the quick game. That was a super quick game. Out of the hands of the thrower, bam, right to the receiver, successfully for a touchdown. How in-depth is that quick game part of the playbook? It's pretty in-depth because people want the ball out the hands of the quarterback into the playmaker's hands downfield as fast as possible. There are a lot of plays, a lot of options involved with that. Extra point from McManus is good, and the lead is up to eight. So the drive there took six plays, and it's finished off by a New York Jets touchdown. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone, and no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. 
The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. They've been settling quite a bit. They've been able to move the football some, but they've just been settling. That's one of the reasons they're down on the scoreboard. I love that word you picked, settling, because nowadays in, in this NFL, you're thinking touchdown almost every drive because everything's so high-powered. Yeah, you'll take the field goal, but you always feel like you're leaving points out there when you don't put it in the end zone. They'll be trying to put it in the end zone here on this drive. On second down, here's Penny. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 10 yards and a Seattle first down. They held him in check in the first half, but that's his longest carry of the game right there. So would this be the definition of fresh legs since he didn't get much done in the first half? Now he has a great opportunity. He's taking full advantage of it. Penny, a first down carry. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. 10 go. yards and a Seattle first down. Well, how many times do we say in this game that speed kills, and it does it in so many different ways? In this case, you got a back who's quick and shifty, can make moves, make people miss, but also gets to and through a hole before it can close down. That's some of the benefits of that speed, not just outrunning people in the secondary, and that led to a really nice game. They go play action now. Wilson. This complete to lock it. Now a loose football. The ball comes out, and it's scooped up by the Jets. And they will take over at the 29-yard line. Well, he did what he's known for. He made the catch, then he turned into a runner, took the contact, and coughed it up. And all I remember as a player, when they catch the ball, when those acrobatic guys catch it, you have to make them pay sometimes. You have to put it on them, big tackle, knock the ball free, anything you can do to slow them down. And we put our focus now on Le'Veon Bell. Those are his numbers through roughly the first half of the season. And given that, you'd have to think he's on pace for a thousand yard campaign. Steady as he goes, steady goes the offense. But you know what else is happening too? Because they are a team now recognized with the ability to run the football. You've got to be able to throw it better now, right? Better throwing lanes, better opportunities for the guys downfield. Maybe more one-on-one -on -one coverage, which you should be able to beat easier. Yeah, he's, he's establishing not just a tone, but an identity for his team. And that's a discussion. Into a double team, and it's intercepted. Shaquille Griffin with a pick. And his guys will take over at their own 44-yard line. And Brandon, this is a real nice job defensively of getting inside a quarterback's head and figuring out, okay, where is he going with the football? Because you can make an educated guess defensively, not all the time, but sometimes. And when you're right, you've got a decent chance of coming away with the football. Well, let's gaze our attention as the offense takes the field on Rashad Penny. He's been good. They've utilized him well, but they're losing here in the second quarter. What might they change offensively? I think that what you try and do is expand how you get the ball to him a little bit. Get him out in open space, maybe swing the ball to him. What's that they used to call it in the West Coast offense, the long handoff? Yeah. Serve as your running play that way, as well as continue to feed him the football. Some of these runs now may pop bigger later in the game because of the effects of running it. Sometimes people, after a while, they don't want to tackle him anymore, or they get tired, or they get out of position, or he runs through tackles. Continue to feed him the ball. He's having that kind of game. Yeah, might they get him the ball in some space in some different ways here. From the gun on third down, Wilson. They'll lock it with a grab over the middle. And he has the first down yardage before they bring him down right at the 45. Wilson to lock it there for the Seahawk first down. Wilson now 9 of 15 throwing the ball, 60% at its first and 10. Now Rashad Penny. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. That one good for 14 and a Seahawk first. I don't know what this says about me, but I love successful runs up the middle when the blocking is so well executed like that. And it doesn't matter whether it's zone blocking, whether it's a power scheme. When you have a blocker on a defender and then the running back can read it, find the proper hole, and just go, sometimes a thing of beauty. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. He lets this one fly, and this is intercepted, but they'll say out of bounds. So oh, very close to a turnover there in the end zone. 
A third field goal of the first half, not what they're looking for as they come up on third down. Left side complete to Lockett. And he'll be stopped at the 27-yard line, well short of the first down marker. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. So he's been a busy man here in this first half. That's three field goals for him now. And not just three field goals, but three for three. So even though the offense has struggled a bit putting it in the end zone, they've still been able to come away with points due to his leg. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. And New York set to take the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. Throwing again on second down. Darnold looking middle, and it's incomplete. He was looking for Jamison Crowder there. But now it's third down. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Back to throw, Darnold. Found his target, it's Anderson. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. The 21 yards there as they convert on third. I think it all came together there in breaking route. Drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Four down, four down. Darnold off the play fake to Bell. He'll let this go for the end zone. And that will be incomplete. Try to dial up the long way way out there, but it'll be third down. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. Now Darnold. Wide open receiver complete. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. Darnold now closing in on a 200-yard first half through the air. It's first and ten. This is Bell. And he'll be brought down at about the 25 after a pickup of four. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. Coming up at halftime, we remind you once again that we're going to check in with Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. He'll have stats and scores from around the NFL as we reach now, hard to believe, the halfway point of the season. Time flying. It certainly is. Time to get the sweaters out, my man. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Darnold now over 200 yards already in this first half. It's first and 10. Darnold now to throw. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Quincy Anunwa that time, but it'll be second down. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. Now it's Darnold. On the catch, it's Crowder. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. The reception good for 7. It's third down. A second down completion got him 7. Now here's third and 3. Here's Darnold. He's able to find Wallace. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. From the left half, should be a fairly easy one here. The kick by McManus is good. And that'll push the lead up to eight. A dozen plays on that drive that ends with the field goal. Let's go ahead and break out some of the old chestnuts here, right, partner? Keep the ball in front, rally to it, and make the tackle. Right? No big plays given up. No balls over your head. Bend, 
don't break. Hold on, Let's hold go, on. Go, chestnuts? Go, uh, you like Come that on. One? What does that mean, break out the, just because you break, you break chestnuts? I, I'm not sure about that, but I'm just going with why they said that. I have no idea. Well, look at the running back, the man out of the backfield as he gears up to go again. You can count his carries on one finger. They've only given him the rock one time, Charles. What gives? So we can't draw any conclusions just yet. He has to touch the ball multiple times in order to get into a rhythm and have a chance to have success. You know who else gets into a rhythm? The offensive line. They feel better about what they're doing when they know they've had multiple opportunities to get it done. Yeah, well, the conclusion we can draw so far, they're losing here in the second quarter. Let's see if they change tunes. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Brandon, it looked like he had his hands on it for a moment, but let, let's face it, that was going to be a tough catch all the way because of the presence. In a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 36, and his crew will take over with a football at the 35-yard line. And he may want to track down that football because that's interception number one on his career. You're saying that's going into the trophy case? I'd put it there. Yeah, no doubt about it. That's when you ask the equipment guys to make sure they hold it for you after the game. But if you play in the back seven on defense, that's part of your job, finding ways to take the ball away from the other team. Le'Veon Bell and the Jets ready to begin their next drive. He's been good. His guys are winning. So far, the recipe working here in the second quarter. And he doesn't like to just tote the rock. He wants to carry his team on his back, and that's what he's done throughout this game. Yeah, he's done that. He'll be hoping to continue that trend. The Jets are going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Darnold. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Now the Jets going to use the second of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Darnold and the Jets come up third and long following the sack. Third and long, it's Darnold. Caught here by Bell. And the tackle going to be made at the 41 as they stop him a few yards short of the first. Now the Seahawks forced to use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 34 seconds to go before halftime. Oh, the Seahawks come after it, and they block it. Now it's scooped up, and this is a live football. And so they will end up with a ball and possession right on the edge of the red zone at the 20. A terrific pump block, and that has to set them up in a position to try and get more points, don't you think, this time frame? Absolutely, and what a momentum booster that could be into the lockers. Oh, without a doubt. They score here, they sprint into the locker room feeling really, really good about themselves. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And where the ball is now, you got the field goal pretty much in the bag. Now do you try for the end zone a couple of times? I don't think there's any question about it. You might get a gift of six points rather than the three that you just noted that you feel like you already have. Be aggressive, go after it, and try and get those points. It's caught, lock it. And they'll get this from the eight to the five. Pick up a three. the passer, defense. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. So we've come to halftime in a five-point game. As we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Hi again, everybody. Let's get you caught up with what's going on around the league here in the unofficial midway point, week eight of the NFL season. Lastly, let's check on one final game for you. And you can see they are scoreless as they play the second quarter. In our game, it was Sam Darnold who was on target in the first half. He's thrown for over 200 yards already, and his guys have the lead as well. As we get you back 
to Brandon God. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. That's fielded in the end zone, and no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And New York set to take the field. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. And he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. Now a draw play. This is Bell. So that one will get him halfway to the first down marker. Seven yards makes it third and seven now. Throwing here on third down, Darnold. He finds his target, it's Crowder. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks 33. He's such a good route runner, shows it there on third down, very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot and they connected there and picked up a first down. Let's go, fellas. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. Yo, 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 yo. Yo! Now a fake on the give here as they try the run pass option. And incomplete, a drop there in the middle third of the field. That'll bring up second down. On second and 15 now. Darnold. Oh, he dropped it. They were looking for him in the middle third. He couldn't catch it. Now third down. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means he'll need to come up with something here on third down. Got his man there. It's Wallace complete. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. It's a gain of 20 and picking up the first. Darnold now. Five straight completions here in this second half. First and 10. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. This one caught by Crowder. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. I think a lot of people ask the same question all the time. Why do we see so many slants in the red zone? Well, the windows are tighter. Everything's more condensed. It has to be quicker, and you've got to deliver the ball on time. Your biggest worry, ball gets tipped in the air, because if that happens, then it's fair game for the defense. A good run of six yards there. Gets him closer to the goal line with second down coming up. They'll try to run this one in. And he is in. Touchdown, New York. A great play there with his second touchdown of the game and fifth on the year. And the Jets will extend their lead. A good sustained drive there in this third quarter, capping it off with a touchdown to give him a nice two-score advantage. It was actually a fun one to watch, wasn't it? I mean, for me, seeing the mix of what they did, how they moved the ball downfield, very sharp, too. Each and every play seemed to be executed with, with great dispatch. McManus' point after is good, and it gives his guys a 12-point advantage. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And it ends with a one-yard touchdown run. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This is taken at the three. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. 
Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. And their halftime hole now even deeper, and they need a big drive here just to answer the first touchdown of the second half scored against them. They were down at the half. Now, as you mentioned, they're down a little bit bigger, but no time for discouragement. Just got to get back to it, right? Put your shoulder against the boulder and start pushing and try and get back to where you were to start the half. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. Only a yard of the pickup there, and it'll bring up a third down. Here's Wilson to throw. He's just going to dump this one off to his fullback out of the backfield. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. From midfield now, here's Wilson. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Blowing that play up was Henry Anderson. And plays like that really hurt play calling. They had a really nice gain on the previous play, but gave about half the yardage back on the sack. Excellent pressure up front. Nowhere to go with the football. Down he goes. Don't need it all back at once, but you figure they're going to need something here. 17 yards to go on second down. To throw is Wilson. He's got the hook up here on the comebacker. Complete. They'll get nine there as that sets them up better for third down. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. That's complete to Disley, the tight end. And that's going to be another first down as the tackle made at the Jets' 25-yard line. You know I'm going to lean towards the defender, right? You know I'm going to do that. I know. That's a tough situation for him as I see it. But the truth of the matter is, that ball was not streaking towards him. Had a little arc on it. He's got to find a way to get his head around and make a play on the football. They try to run on first down, but this defense says no dice. They stop him a couple yards behind the line of scrimmage. Call it a loss of two on the play, and it'll be second and 12. A rare misstep on that last play because the drive has been strong, but now it's second and 12. Now they'll run it with Scarborough, and he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. Eighth play of the drive, forthcoming, and they need eight yards on third down. Play action, it's Wilson. And he will find his man on the outside. They're able to convert on third down and that sets up a first and goal. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, and the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. Used to be occasional, right? Safety valve, throw one to him every so often, but mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. It'll be a three-yard pickup, and it brings up second and goal. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? This has been a long drive. You got to figure a field goal would be a letdown. Can they convert now on third and goal? Now Wilson looks to throw, fires right side, and that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. So now fourth and goal. You're trailing by a decent amount here. What are you doing, Coach Davis? Well, I've got to think to myself, just how many more opportunities am I going to have this close and have this chance? I've got to go for it right here. The clock's dwindling on me. Let's go get it done. So yet another field goal to end a drive. That has been a very common theme. He's now hit five of them in this game. Yeah, Brandon, as an offense, you hate that you've had to call on your kicker so often, but you have to love the fact that time and time again, he's come through. Let's go, boys, bring it up. The New York offense taking over for their next possession. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that, they had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were competent up to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went, no adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. From the gun on third down, here's Darnold. Crowder's got it over the middle. 
And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Give him 12 yards there, and the Jets have a first. Darnold now nearing the 300-yard mark with still a corner to play. It's first and 10. They'll fake the handoff. Now Darnold. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. So second down, still 10 yards to go. Ball on the 43. Here's Darnold. Goes underneath for Bell. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. The last catch did get three, but they're still left needing seven yards on third down. Back to throw, Darnold. And with a flag down, he goes down. So they're able to sack him. Now the penalty looks like it could be holding. Let's find out. So they decline it as that will bring up four. And I know that yardage and field position are keys to any game played, but you've got to consider downs when you're talking about penalties. And they wisely did not take that one and made it fourth down. That'll be a 48-yard punt, one yard on the return. And it'll be Seahawk football as they take over deep in their own territory. Wilson and the Seahawks take over now, first and 10 at their own 13. Now Wilson, this one into the hands of Metcalf. And able to get this one out just shy of the 25 at the 24. 10 yards and a Seattle first down. Wilson now perfect since the second half started. Seven of seven. It's first and 10. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. And that'll do it for the end of the second quarter. This is the NFL and it's on EA Sports. They'll throw on first down with Wilson. They set up the screen to Penny. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one-possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. To throw again on second down. Wilson. This complete to lock it. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. It's a gain of 12 first down Seahawks. On first and 10, it's Wilson. Looking left side, it's complete. He's got it. And he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. That good for 21 yards on the catch and run. You cannot write these guys off just yet, not with a quarterback like that under center. You mean it actually crossed your mind with him running the team that you could actually maybe write this game off? And is this intercepted? It is. It's intercepted. Picked off by Tremaine Johnson. Jennings was the one he was looking for. Well, you're trailing. It's the fourth quarter, and you've got to throw the football. But the defense knows this, too. So they're just going to sit back, bring in an extra defensive back or two, the old nickel or dime strategy, Brandon, and wait for you to put that bad boy up for grabs. And this one winds up being intercepted. And New York set to take the field. Now, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. Now throwing here to start to drive as they connect left side. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. Give him 15 yards on that one, and the Jets move the chains. On first down, it's Darnold. Got an open man, it's a new one. A gain of six there on first. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Darnold off the play fake to Bell. Throw complete to Herndon. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. That one good for 26 and a first down. 
And defensively, they just don't seem to have much of an answer for this passing game. Not at all. Look at the confidence that's exhibited here with that type of a lead. Clock on their side. Instead of running it, they're still throwing it, trying to pick up first downs and keeping the football. Switch up, switch up. Now a first down carry by Bell. He'll get this down inside the 10 for a pickup of about three. He's had his eyes on 7,000 career rushing yards, and with that last effort, he has hit that mark. What a career. And that is the number to focus in on because oftentimes we talk about where do they rank all time. We're not there yet. He's not knocking on the top 10 or the top 20, but over 7,000 yards in a career, fantastic. So after the penalty, here's second and three. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. After the penalty, it's Bell. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. It's a three-yard pickup, and that sets up a first and goal. They'll try and run it in with Bell. Nothing doing there. They're going to wind up holding him at the two. No gain there, and it's going to set up second and goal. On second and goal, Darnold. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. Well, they've been so good on third down all day long. Can they convert another here on third and goal? Darnold, under pressure, down he goes. Sacked at the 10. Michael Kendricks coming in to drop him. Well, that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. Yeah, blink of an eye, that happened fast and a big sack. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This from 25 yards out. And McManus able to put it through. And that will give them a 12-point lead. So they settle for just the three, but clearly right now anything helps trying to salt this one away in the fourth. Without a doubt, obviously a touchdown probably would have been the final nail to finish this thing off, but it's still eight up time, got points. So while it's not mission accomplished, it's darn close. Let's go, let's go, let's go. The Seahawks offense now, they get ready to head back onto the field. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. And, of course, they'd like to forget the inning, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, that does them no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. Finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. Now a man open down the middle of the field. And they're able to get this one across the 35. It's a gain of 12 first down Seahawks. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Throwing is Wilson. He'll find Metcalf. A good pick up there, 26 yards. That's what we're used to seeing from him right there. Plays like that, why he's number four in the league in terms of receiving yardage. Able to make adjustments all along the way. Doesn't matter where he lines up, where he releases from. Working his way into the secondary, figures out defenses and finds weak spots in order to get open. Now it's Wilson. Short throw to Disley. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Here's Wilson. Wilson hit, it's loose, it's out, fumble. On plays like this when the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back because this is, this is a quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Tighten up, tighten up. 
They'll try and throw for it with Wilson. And that is incomplete, but there is a flag. And on fourth down, this is a big call. So flag for the contact, pass interference. And I know that you're going to look at me and roll your eyes, and rightfully so, because you know what I'm going to say. Doesn't the defender have a right to the football as well? No, I just, I don't like defenders. <laughs> That's because you spent too much time with me. Okay, I'll side with you on this one. This is the correct call. Nab that one on Dwayne Brown. First round pick back in 08. So following the hold, they're in a bit of a hole here with a first and 20. Here's Wilson. That's going to be caught. And he will score. Touchdown, Seattle. Will Disley, his second touchdown on the season as his guys are back within a single score. Okay, I know it's an old line, but it still applies here. The fat lady has not sung yet. She may be warming up, but she hasn't sung yet. There's still an opportunity. Jason Myers now for the extra point. And this is back to a five-point game. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And it all culminates with a Seattle score. A five-point game now as here comes the kickoff. This is taken at his four. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. This Jets offense heading back out there now, led by Sam Darnold. And they must have seen something leading up to this one that said, hey, we're going to be able to go deep because they've gone deep with a lot of success. And pick your phrase, pick your code words, your buzzwords, whatever, vertical stretch, deep passes, go routes, right? What's that Fly? route you love? What's that oh, route you four love? Verts. Four Let's verts. Go. All of it working because they're able to find ways to get deep and for him to show off that big, big arm. We see some of that big arm right here. He has been great. Meanwhile, they take a shot to start the drive, but this is going to wind up incomplete. Ball on the 30 as they come up second and 10. They'll run it with Bell. Nine yards on the pickup there as they'll be left with third and one. They'll let the fullback try and pick it up. This is Anthony Sherman. Oh, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. Not a lot of headway on that carry, but when you're dealing with a defensive line that can cover up your center, sometimes you got to think about getting out of that play. Not going to be a lot of space when that happens. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. And a bit of a mistake there. This is well into the we end zone for go. a touchback. Here we go. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. Well, things are starting to move in the right direction. They get the touchdown last drive, then their defense gets them the football back. Yeah, now they have a chance to get the lead. He'll be taken down. The Jets get in there for the sack. Sacked there by Avery Williamson, the linebacker. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. Now it's Wilson. He gets it to his running back, Rashad Penny. And oh, he's going to be brought down by the face mask. Here come the flags. This is going to get him a first down. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all, and now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. And now it's first and 10, a big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. Out of the gun, here's Wilson. And Wilson's gonna be intercepted a third time. Picked off at the 39. And they will set up shop at their own 41-yard line. Jennings was the one he was looking for. 
I'm not sure I'm absolutely crazy about that play call there. I mean, it's only a one-score game, so is it really time to go bombs away and try and make a big play? I think you can take some underneath stuff and still move it downfield. The New York set to take the field. Right now clinging to a one-score lead, Charles, and I think operating within that four-minute offense with a little less than four minutes to go applies here, right? It certainly does, and that means the playbook is still wide open. But you are a little bit more careful about what you're calling. You want plays they are going to gain yardage, how would you say it, consistently, mm -hmm. right? You don't need the big shots downfield, but make sure the clock continues to run. Pile up the first downs, and the goal? End the game with your quarterback kneeling down at the end, and you still have the lead. So from the 36 now, first and 10. I'm coming after you. I'm coming after you. Play action. It's Darnold. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Jaron Reed. He's the one to get him, and that is sack number seven for him on the year. Brandon, more often than not, you'd say they've had his number, and we can count them up so far. One, two, three, four sacks given up. But guess what? He's still been able to make some plays, and right now they have a lead. Now following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. Here's Darnold. And that going to be incomplete. A lot of contact, no call, and it's third down. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. Darnold now to throw. Herndon's got it complete. If you're a selfish player and you're throwing the ball, you're cool with the completion. Maybe not so cool with the yardage loss, though, huh? Yeah, you went, you went backwards on the yardage. Hey, it kind of works like a sack for the defense there. Yeah, it's a really big play for them, right? Able to figure it out, it, sniff it out, and finish it off. Now, this was still going to be a one-score game either way, but still, that's a potentially harmful miss here in the fourth. It certainly is, because if you consider that now if they give up a touchdown, they give up the lead. So he might be getting the side eye by the defenders coming out on the field now as he goes back to the bench after that miss. They're throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. Throwing again on second and 10. Wilson dumps that off to Penny, his running back. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. That one good for 14 and a Seahawk first. To throw is Wilson. That's complete to Disley, the tight end. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's Seahawk football as we march toward a conclusion. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Here's a throw over the middle. It's taken in by his tight end. And he'll be brought down somewhat awkwardly here and a late flag as well. I think this one's going to be a face mask. So give him the yardage on the pass and half the distance to the goal line. Because they're inside the 30. So now you don't march off the full 15, right? You have half the distance to the goal. In any event, that's precious real estate given up. Looking for a crease, can't find one. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. They'll say no gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. Well, we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. So they will accept the penalty and move forward. So now then, the penalty's got him set up with a first and goal. Back to throw. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. The intended receiver was DK Metcalf, but it'll be second and goal. Throwing now is Wilson. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Back to throw. Brandon, I think end zone caught. 
Touchdown, Seattle. Will Disley, a beast in the red zone with his second touchdown of the game. And the Seahawks are going to retake the lead. Wow, I know it's a never-say-never never situation, but to me, that looks like that's the one that's going to finish them off. The score that puts them in front here late, but now you got to rally your kick team, don't you, and say the last thing we need is a big return. And what happens is guys get overeager, get out of their lane because they're so excited they want to make the last tackle. <laughs> you mess up, could come back at you a long way. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Well, that decision to me was all about pulling up the chart. You know, that, that beautiful chart that tells you when to go for two, when you to go for chart. one. I do <laughs> love it. It helps you with your decision making during heated times. And just look at it right here in this part, point of the game. Go for two. Try to make it a field goal difference. But now just up one makes the rest of this fourth quarter a little more interesting. Yeah, they followed the chart. They just didn't get the two points on the board, did they? Nope. Darnold now to throw. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. Vic Beasley in there to drop him as that clock continues to run. Into the hands of his receiver, Anderson. The Jets are going to use the first of their timeouts as they get it right at the 32nd mark of this fourth quarter. Now Darnold. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. One score down. Here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. They snap it. They're going for it. Here's Darnold. And no, it's incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Seahawks, they'll get the football back in outstanding field position. Now the Jets going to use the second of their three timeouts as the clock will stop with an even 20 seconds left to go. And they take a knee. The Jets going to go ahead and use their final timeout as they get it with just 19 seconds left on the clock. So time to start going in the other direction as they come up now third and long. And they'll indeed take a knee. So on now comes the kicker. It's Jason Myers. Spotted at the left hash. This from 45. So the victory here for Seattle. And you've got to say, CD, it was the defense who had a big part in the W. Oh, without question. When you force four turnovers, you get to enjoy the spoils of victory, don't you? It's rare that you force four turnovers and lose a ball game. That's almost unheard of. They carried this one home. He talked about celebrating with each other and being in a position where going forward, all you think about is, let's get five next time. They're going to be on the hunt. So for the Seahawks, they close out this first half at a very solid six and two. And they'll be able to enjoy this one through the bye week before they get back at it again. Meanwhile, for the Jets, things are definitely going south quickly as they fall now to one and six. And they'll